afternoon, students. Today, we are going to be talking about how we can write inequalities given a word scenario. So um, previously, we talked about how we could write expressions and equations. Today, we're going to look at, they're more kind of like scenarios, because remember, inequalities can have more than one solution. So we're going to look at some of these more than one solution type of things and write inequalities based on that. So I would suggest today, there we're not going to do too many examples because the writing amount is kind of a uh, more than usual for math. Um, I would suggest that you listen to me read each scenario, then pause the video and write it down. Um, if you try writing it without listening to it first, you may write down like maybe you don't, you know, maybe you didn't read this word as dollars, you read it as something else. Um, so if you hear me read it, then pause, you can write it down. Um, please do write down the scenario. So that way, when you go back and look at your notes, like, you know, where the information is coming from. Okay. So here's our first scenario. Alfred's weekly income is at least $500. His fixed income is making $200 for working at a bank and he makes $12 an hour at another job. So go ahead and pause and write down this scenario. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do with inequalities, which we didn't do with equations, is we wanna define our variable. They don't tell us, like, write an inequality where N is equal to the amount of money he makes at his job. Like, they don't give us any of that information. So we need to define it. We need to make it very obvious what is our variable and what is it equivalent to, okay? Um, when we practice writing inequalities in class, if there's no variable, I'm gonna expect you to define a variable. On your algebra placement test, they give you scenarios like this and you have to write an inequality. And if you only write the inequality and don't define what your variable is equivalent to, you won't receive full credit. So it's important. So let's just use um, H to represent um, the number of hours worked weekly. So we're trying to write an inequality that represents all of this money that Alfred makes. Um, we don't know how many hours he works at his other job. So H is gonna be the number of hours he works per week at that job. So one thing you need to know about like when you get money, so income is like the money that you receive for your work. One thing you need to know is that you need to take your fixed income Add the variable income, and that's going to equal your total income, okay? So your fixed income is like, think about me as a teacher. My fixed income is the paycheck I receive every month from Austin ISD. Um, variable income is like extra money you make on the side. So let's say like I dog sit my friend's dogs on the side for money. That's my variable income. Fixed income is like money I'm getting every single month, no matter what, because of my salary. Variable income is like money that I choose to make based on, you know, how many dogs I dog sit every month. So it could, it could be different every single month. So if we add up the fixed and the variable, we can figure out someone's total income, you know, if this is per week, per month, per year, whatever. So um, Alfred's fixed income is going to be $200 because it says his fixed income is making $200. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So we have $200 plus his variable income. So his variable income is going to be the $12 an hour he makes at another job. We don't know, like it just, every week, it just kind of depends on the number of hours he works. But we know if he makes $12 per hour, if we take 12 and multiply it by H, the number of hours, that will tell us how much he makes, you know, at that job every week. So 12H would be how we would represent his variable income, $12 per the number of hours that he works. Um, and we also know that his weekly income is at least $500. So at least means, if we're comparing this all to $500, at least means that he makes exactly $500 or he could make more than $500. Um, so the amount that he makes per week, this 200 plus the $12 per hour he works, he either makes exactly $500 from that every week, or sometimes he makes more. It just depends on the number of hours that he works. So this is the symbol greater than or equal to is how we would want to represent this. So all of this right here shows us <clears throat> an inequality that represents all of Alfred's financial income situations, his fixed and his variable compared to his total income. Let's look at another example. This one's a little bit more straightforward. So I'm gonna read it and then I would pause the video to write down 
the scenario. A taco place can have no more than 75 people eating at one time. Right now, there are 30 people eating. So go ahead and pause. Okay, so let's write a scenario that shows like how many more people could come into the restaurant. So there's no variable defined. So let's define a variable. Let's use P because we're talking about people. So we'll say P is equal to the number of people who can come in. So number of people who can come in the restaurant, or I'm just going to put number of people who can come in. So P is going to be equivalent to how many people could come in. Cause there's a variety of people, right? If there are 30 people that are eating between 30 and 75 is how many more people can come in. So like one more person could come in, they'd be good. Six more people could come in, they'd still be under 75. 20 more people could come in, right? 30 plus 20 is 50, they'd still be under 75. So the number of people that could come in can vary. So let's write out, so P, the number of people who could come in plus the 30 people that are already eating, um, it has to be uh, less than 75 but it could also equal 75. It says no more than 75 people. So it could be 75 people. So the amount of people eating plus the amount of people who could come in has to be less than 75 or equivalent to 75, but it can't be any higher than that. So this is the inequality that would represent this scenario. So when you're writing inequalities, kind of some things you have to keep in mind are the terms such as like more than, at least, no more, um, at most. All of those are really important. Um, when you're writing inequalities, because they kind of help you figure out what symbol you need. Also, if there is no variable that's defined, you need to define the variable. I like to pick variables that kind of relate to the problem. So I picked P for people. The other one I picked H for hours. Um, so it really just kind of depends on what piece of information you are looking for. Okay. Um, so for your practice questions today, you're going to have two more practice questions. Again, the scenarios are a little wordy. Um, but they are very similar to what we just did. So I, I would say just write them down one by one. I will read them. You can pause, write it down, and then write the second one. And you can check your answers in the table of contents as always. So here's the first practice question. Ms. Walker has $100 to spend at Costco. She loves the chicken nuggets that cost $16 per bag. Write an inequality that represents how many bags of chicken nuggets Ms. Walker can buy with her budget. Um, so don't forget, you need to define the variable. We're talking about bags, so you could use B, up to you. All right, here is the second problem. So this is kind of like the first one with the income. So it says, write an inequality, sorry. There we go. Write an inequality to represent someone with a weekly income of at least $250, a fixed income of $50, and a variable income of 25 cents per hour. So again, you're thinking about um, the number of hours someone may have to work. Sorry if you can hear my dryer in the background, it gets really loud. <laughs> um, but go ahead and pause and write this down if you need it. You can always check your answers in the table of contents and ask your teachers for any questions. Hope you all have a good day.